I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, Alice Parker, the author of Choices, Changes, and Friends, 1970s After Divorce, a memoir that chronicles the lives of four divorced women in the wild 1970s who sought independence and adventure. Alice is sharing her personal experiences that inspired the story, her thoughts on women's empowerment, and her hopes for the impact of her work on readers today. We are delighted to have Alice on Spotlight today. Thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put Alice in the spotlight today and ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel. Alice, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It's a real uh, pleasure for me, and I'm very excited. The pleasure is all mine. I'm very excited, too. In fact, I was going to wear a leisure suit today (laughs) to celebrate with like a big Huckapoo shirt, that had like wild scenes on it, a couple of gold (laughs) chains, and then play like (laughs) Dancing Queen or something. Oh, yes, yes, very much. That would be good, right? (laughs) Exactly, exactly, yeah. This this is a memoir, but it's also a novelized version of it. And it's a spectacular ride because I truly think, other than perhaps like the 1930s and the 1940s, there was no more romantic and exciting era than the 1970s. Yes, but I have to say it might read like a novel, but it is a memoir and it's all true. Oh, okay. I thought it was a fictionalized account. No, no. Okay. Oh, no. That's what makes it so wild and crazy since we were these four of us, 25-year-old Chicago suburbanite housewives, all married too young, much, much from 16 to 20. uh, I was 20, the oldest, Mm -hmm. and I have to say, still a virgin, okay? (laughs) So I'm talking naive, okay? Right. So uh, it, it that was part of the whole thing, because our excitement was maybe a Tupperware party where they served wine <laughs> or the visit from the Avon lady. You know, some <laughs> excitement. Now, some of us, we did some part time jobs. But then when we had kids, it was, you know, you, you stay home and you do the whole housewifey thing and everything like that. But all of this going on, as you as you said, it was, why are they having so much fun and we're bored out of our gourds? Right, because you know? you're 20 years old, you're saddled in a marriage, you're not necessarily happy, apparently unhappy. <laughs> and, you know, you see like lines in front of the discos with people dressed in their finest polyester and bright colors having the times <laughs> of their life. And, uh, you know... You're saying, why can't that be me? And you decided, why can't that be me? Right. And you made you made a choice, you made a change, and you did it with your friends. Hence the title in a way, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. Because yeah. it was kind of, we tried. I mean, we tried. My marriage was probably the shortest at six years, and the longest was a little over 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we had tried, but it was, these were not men who were interested in any kind of going out. I mean, it was all about TV and, you know, the recliner and so forth. And, And again, when you're 25 years old, it's sort of, I don't wanna be my mother. Right. And even though mother is saying, put up with it, we did, you know. <laughs> exactly. So Connie uh, was the first one to take that brave step for independence. And she had already been trying to <laughs> get out there and find her own fun since she wasn't having it. Mm-hmm. And so she was kind of like, you know, this is ridiculous. And we all hit those points. But she started the ball rolling in September of 1971. Then I came into it in February of 72. And then April was in the following month. And then a year later, the last one, which was actually the ugliest, and she was president of the PTA as well as being a den mother. So, and three kids, but she had also married at 16. So- She had no experience of all of it. So if we couldn't get them to go out, we started going out. 
And of course, that was the whole thing. Once you get, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. <laughs> this is fun. And then when you realize that there are other men who go, hey, <laughs> and they notice you. A lot of it, too, Connie and I were working at the first French restaurant in the suburbs. Okay. Mm -hmm. The owner had uh, uh, worked in as Mater D in the, the largest, most famous French restaurant down on uh, Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. So he knew everybody. And when he opened up, all of these big shot famous people are, are coming in. And of course, here we are in our little, you know, French outfits, low cut, short skirts and everything like that. And now you be really, really nice to all these people <laughs> because they're special. And and he would like when they were in season, we had the Bears and the Blackhawks. And 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 I have to honestly say it was a real grab ass situation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sorry. there was <laughs> there was no term for, you know, sexual harassment. It was such it a wasn't considered wrong in that era. Oh, it's what yeah. you did. Yeah, it was so common. It was right. so common. What's wrong? You don't you have a sense of humor? You right. know, <laughs> yeah. exactly. And you didn't mind to a certain extent because even though the whole women's movement was going on, we liked men. We just right. didn't like the ones we were married to, <laughs> and and we wanted to experience more men. Right. And of course, I have to say to Logan at that time, love and sex were synonymous. Mm -hmm. Well, he must love me. He wants to have sex with me. Right. You know. Right. So it's it's kind of with between <laughs> alcohol and the dancing and and uh, you know experimenting with sex. It was like what could possibly go wrong with everything. <laughs> but we did maintain a real sense of humor and of course the key, the four of us supporting each other. Right. We were all we had. Right. It was so unacceptable to get divorced. Who do you think you are? A movie star or something? What are you doing? You right. know, you know, I, mean, you're not I grew up in that era. No, nobody yeah. really got divorced. It was scandalous. <laughs> a person who was divorced was a divorcee. And it yes. sounded like uh, yeah. she was hot to trot, they would say uh, on happy days, right? Oh, oh very <laughs> much so. And and of course, I have to say the the funniest chapter in the book, and and as you read it, was uh, us <laughs> maybe a little too much to drink, but propositioning the famous movie star like what housewife does that? <laughs> but it we had gotten to the point, and I was only at that time divorced about a month or so, but I had had a few experiences, mm -hmm. and. With Connie's encouragement, as always, and me with the little, little, little mouth. And she says, say something, say something, say something, you know, because we'd gone right. to get his autograph after we'd gone to his play. And he was such a rising star, which, of course, he did go on to be the number one star in the 70s. But and <laughs> and it now, was you're not going to share his name. Well, in the book, because names were changed, as we said, to protect the guilty, because we didn't know any innocent people. A lot of the men we were involved with were married. Right. Okay. But it's not real hard. I do give the clues there that he was the first Cosmo centerfold. Oh, okay. I think we know who that is now. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I won't even ding, say... Ding, ding. I yeah. won't even mention that his initials are B R. <laughs> yeah. Well, I called him I called him Bobby Ryan in the book. Okay, that's right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so it was sort of but the whole idea was wouldn't that be fun, you know, right. just you know, of course the last thing we ever accept, uh, expected was that he would accept us. And right. and it was not only a hysterically funny evening that mm -hmm. we ended up uh, several nights later doing at Connie's house, but then sharing it with the ladies at the restaurant, you know, the other waitresses or just anybody we knew. And they're just going, oh my God. And it was the idea, anything is possible. Mm. You do it for fun because of right. course, then something that 
I never knew or did before, recreational sex. Right. But the whole idea of why not? Right. <laughs> you know, and it just raised the level of possibility. And all of the women are going, wow, okay, <laughs> wow, yeah. anything is possible. Yeah. And, and the, it's it's one of those things I didn't realize at the time, but years later, of course, what good sex can give mm -hmm. you real confidence. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. In, in who you are and and what you're doing and everything. So that was a, a real highlight and a huge change. And as I said, though Connie and I had the most of the experience mm -hmm. in sharing it with the other women who were, you know, teetering on, oh, I don't know, I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. and just think about it. Winner's mm -hmm. risk. Yeah. And what's the worst thing that could happen? I mean, you know, he'd say no or something. But, right. Right. You know. But yeah. that's that was part of how we'd get out there and you did what? <laughs> you know, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> OK, OK. Exactly. Like, well, gonna... you guys were, were pioneers of the sexual revolution in a way. Um, and We didn't I mean, realize. But yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For the everyday woman. Uh, right, exactly. Like I said, movie stars yeah. were living this kind of lifestyle, sure. <laughs> yeah. But suburban yeah. housewives from the no. greater Chicago area were not. No. And uh, no. so this was quite a thrilling time in your lives. You thoroughly enjoyed it, particularly after going from indentured servitude <laughs> to liberation. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was like being sprung from jail, right? Well, tremendously so. And it wasn't that they were horrible men. Right. But, I mean, one but drink. they were still stuck with those 1950 values yeah. that they provide oh, the yeah. check, they sit on the chair, you bring them their dinner, they have their beer, and then you're happy. Right. And they yeah. can do what they want to do. Right. Okay. Like I said, one drank, one did drugs, one was a real womanizer. And then right. I, <clears throat> my ex was asexual because mother told him not to give up <laughs> his power by having sex. Wow. Okay? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a shockerino, you know. Right. You know, this is the Mad Men era in a way. Have you envisioned uh -huh. this yes. as kind of like yes. the Mad Women? Have you thought of it as a TV series or a movie or something? Well, I did have one fan of the book had said you're kind of like a <laughs> Housewives Chicago version of Sex in the City. Right. I mean, we were many years earlier and we weren't professionals in any way. Right. <laughs> But that whole idea of just experimenting and that I deserve it or I I have a right to try it at least. Right. Or as I said, we got to that point of, you know, winner's risk. And I, I didn't want to miss anything. And that's where having the disco to go to I mean, we would go there most of the time, like after work or or something like that. And the other girls would sometimes join us. And and it was sometimes just about dancing because that back then you right. could dance by right. yourself, get up there and, and go with the music. And soon you would sometimes see somebody else with you. So but it was also a place to, of course, meet men and which it you know, became kind of a, <laughs> you know, somebody you pick up in a bar. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still the variety of men we were involved with was really kind of amazing. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Well, you know, it sounds like a, a wild time, a wild ride, an enjoyable mm -hmm. time. As a person who's divorced, I remember people used to come and say, oh, you're divorced. Oh, I'm sorry. But like, uh, don't be sorry. Uh, yeah. We'll celebrate later. You know, yeah, uh, so yeah. I think I, when when I heard about people getting married, then I'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was that sort of a desperation thing with April when she lost her big lover that she had and mm -hmm. and she didn't want to go back to her ex. But she, you know, she also was not into working like we right. were and and she well if I just get married and you know uh mm -hmm. and 
And of course, when you want to just, you know, the choice yeah. was not good. It's but not necessarily a great goal. The name of the book is Choices, Changes, and Friends, 1970s After Divorce. It is yes. a memoir. It is written by Alice Parker. It is an epic ride, a lot of laughs, a lot of humor, a lot of remembrances of a very romantic time back in the 1970s when there were mirrored balls on the uh, dance floors and lights blasting down and men and women dressed in colorful clothing. It was a great time. If you missed it, watch Saturday Night Fever. It was a lot like that, <laughs> but better yet, read Choices, Changes, and Friends, 1970s After Divorce. Alice Parker, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you so much. Always fun to talk about those great old days. Absolutely. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time, this time, until next time, on Spotlight. And Alice and I will leave you like this, doing our little disco dance. <laughs>